You know, Jared, all these people interview me all the time. And I'm like, I can't tell you how many times I've thought, if Jared was asking these questions, they'd be completely different. Oh, really? Totally. So is that what we're gonna do right now? I'm just saying, like, like some of the questions, people get close. Yeah. Particularly some of the contemporaries. The, like some of the guys that are, there's some guys that have done some really good interviews. Mm -hmm. And then there's other guys that I'm like, man, you, they had such an opportunity to do something, but they don't quite, they like, you know what's through. going on here yeah. every day. Yeah. You know, so anyway, it'll be interesting once you, to see what you're going to ask me. Uh-huh. Because I pounded on you so hard for the last 10 years. I'm like, Jared knows all the secrets. He knows where all the dead bodies are. You know, kind of like you guys. Yeah, right? Francisco, how long you been here? Uh, two and a half years. Yeah. Johnny? Four years. How much, how much money you owe me right now, Johnny? None at all. I think you owe me. <laughs> how much you owe me? No, you owed me from the little baseball game we were playing. Yes. You paid me, though. 600 Yeah, fuck you. Who knew catching fuck a ball? Fuck you, Kanye. <laughs> Who knew catching a ball could be so hard? So, Grant, I'm... Uh, Are we going? Yeah, we're, we're going to go. Okay, hold on one second. Hold on. Let me finish this one thing. I don't really love this watch. You want me to do it? How it the charges? The mechanics of it? Because it's only got like a 27-hour reserve. And so I'm winding it all the time. I'm not used to winding my watches. I'm used to just throwing them on and rolling, shaking them out, man. Stupid. This is the dumbest thing I ever bought right here. Doesn't it feel good? Single most dumb thing I've ever bought in my whole life. Okay, let me get rid of this. What, what, are, we, what, 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 are, what are we doing? What are you trying to get accomplished here? Yeah, so let's just go. Let's just roll. Okay. Hey there, how are you? My name's Jared Glant. I'm the president of Cardone Enterprises, and today I have a riveting interview. For the first time ever, on film, I will interview... The, where's the, there's no film? I will interview the... <laughs> How old are you? Film. The Grant Cardone. This is the interview everybody's been waiting for. Oh my God. Ten years in so the making. so corny. <laughs> uh, this is actually going to be really fun. Okay. You know, I've, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot over the last ten years about how kind of this thing has taken off. And I think that I have a different perspective of you than everybody on the face of the earth, except for probably Elena. Because I've seen the whole, the whole deal here. And so I have some questions for you today that even in me having worked as closely as I have with you, uh, I think a lot of people are gonna wanna know the answers to. Yeah, good. So let's see, let's see what you got. Well, I would just say I hope they're better than some of the questions. I, I was in this interview recently. A guy was a complete idiot. So let me just ask you this. You know who I'm talking about. Of course. So, I, I, you know, this social media thing is, is become a major part of who you are and what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently, because I'm connected to all of it, uh, I've been seeing a lot of hate. Come at me. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I, am I hating on anybody? You never hate on anybody. I like, really don't. I really don't hate on any, like, like. I mean, you may talk some trash every once in oh, a while, yeah. but you have no hate for anybody. Yeah. Why do you think you're getting hated on so much right now? Mm. I mean, I think there's different reasons. I, I think I provoke some of it. I mean, to be completely honest, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Is yeah. that something you've always done your whole life? I, I'm a little antagonistic. Uh -huh. I, can, I can be, I can be, I, I think I punch people's buttons. Um, I, I remember being in high school and I got punched on all the time, dude. Like this is not a new thing for me, you know. Being, 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 kind of. Um, I don't know what the word is, but hated on. I mean, that's mm -hmm. kind of the best way to say it. But in high school, the whole football team hated me. What were you instigating in high school as well? I was really just being me, uh -huh. and I didn't quite fit in, and 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 I saw things that I didn't understand, and I would talk about them. And I had a big mouth, and I still have a big mouth today. Like when I see something being done, that's like, that, that's not true. Like that, you know, that I can't help it. When I see when I see somebody saying there's somebody online and they're not, I can't not help. I literally do not have the filter or the breaking mechanism to not <laughs> say something about it. I probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't say anything. Do you think that that's helped you or hurt you in life? I think it's in both. I think it's helped me and hurt me. I think it's helped me 
forge who I am and, you know, and, and get, get, get some, get some of my ideas known. Cause I'll stay with them long enough mm -hmm. to, to, to convert people's thinking. And then I can't believe I'm doing this interview with you. <laughs> I work with you every day. It's kind of weird looking. I feel like I'm with Charlie Rose or something. And, and then, uh, yeah, but the other thing is it's hurt me, right? Because it creates a little bit of an adversarial role with a lot of people. Um, and look, I watch, I watch the rappers, right? I, I, hear, I hear them talk about each other. You know, these little bickering, bickerings that Beef. these- Beefs. Beefs. Bickerings. Uh -huh. um, you, you, you know, look, the people that I want to know me aren't hating on me. Uh -huh. The people I want to do business with, they, 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 there's no hate. Uh, you know, I don't know why, what I stir up in, in these people. Do you think? That, I think part think... of it is, is my work ethic, though. I think part of it is people are trying to figure out how does that guy show up every single day. Uh huh. How, what what is running him? What is driving him to produce? Guys that are on a, a similar level and have the same capability and and, and possibilities. I think. Some of those guys are like, why am I not revved up like he is? Well, I'll just, tell, I'll just ask you this question because this is crazy. Uh -oh. uh, how, how and why do you even show up? Because you don't have to. Like you're uh -huh. in a position where like you have more money that, than could ever be spent. Like somebody's going to have to try hard to destroy what you've created. Why do you still show up? And why do you still work so hard? Why are you still... Jamming, jamming me for uh, it, it, a $30 thing over there. Uh, at five o'clock in the afternoon. At five o'clock in the afternoon. Like, yeah. wh why? Wh why do you still do this? I mean, you know, this is what I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm built to do. This is what I'm, this is my purpose. This is my, you know, I'm not happy with just making money mm -hmm. uh, or having cars or, look, I got one house. I have one car. None of that means anything to me. Like, like you don't see me collecting stuff. And so work has always been the thing. Like when, when I was 10 and my, when I was eight or nine, I guess, and my, before my dad died, I was working with him. I remember that vividly. Mm -hmm. Work was something sacred with my dad. Mm -hmm. And I remember picking up pecans with him. It was like a treasured moment, a memory I have of work, mm -hmm. of, 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 of accomplishment, of the scurrying, hurrying, uh, scampering, trying to pick stuff up and put it all in a bag. Uh -huh. You know, Jake will have that experience with you. You know, yeah. he's, he's, Kids don't listen. They 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 emulate. Yeah. They 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 mimic, and I was mimicking my dad. My dad had this phenomenal work ethic, and um, you know, so that's what I know how to do. I know how yeah. to work, man. I like to work. I like to work. Whether it's a, a conference or a trip or mm -hmm. we go down to Brazil, I want to work. Mm -hmm. Now you touched on this. And it could, be, it could be something broken. Lewis yeah. House would probably say there's some brokenness inside of me, you know. Um, but I feel best when I'm contributing. I remember when being a little kid and I wanted to contribute to the household. I wanted to do something. It, my mom was washing dishes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, to wash the dishes. And, and, and I just got in her way. So mm -hmm. she's just like, get out of there. So I've always loved work. And I think, I think a lot, most people love work. And yeah. they just don't get enough chance to, to do it. So this place... You know, when I was 26 years old, I was working car deals. I was working them from eight o'clock in the morning till 1230 at night. Yeah. Every night, like literally every day of the week. This is not a new thing for me. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and it's not about the money because I was only making 80, 90, 80 or $90,000 a year then. Mm -hmm. And I was like, then when I went on the road, you know, you and I talk about me being on the road for 18 months, once 18 months yeah. at a time without going home. I was out there trying to figure out my pitch, find, trying to like scared, probably terrified, trying to figure out my deal. And then once you figure it out, you're like, oh my God, I went through all this terror to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now it's getting good. I'm not going home now. Yeah. Now I'm in a relish. Cause you're winning. I'm winning. Yeah. And so here, here I am, this, this little place is like a playground for me, the e-commerce thing. Mm -hmm. Bang in between graphics and that's wrong and this is wrong, fire that guy, get rid of him. Let's add these people. What's wrong with you, Jared? You know, that, that, it, it's like a playground. I, 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 uh, I've never said this before, but I think about Elon and, and um, Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are those guys going through every day? 
their playground is so immense and their resources so phenomenal mm -hmm. that they can be like, okay, throw 10 million at that project, throw 40 million at this one, throw 100. Just the moves, the weight of the moves that they're making. <laughs> like world changers. Mm -hmm. What, do you think that you're misunderstood by a lot of people? Oh, for sure. And what, why is that? Well, it's gotta be my fault. Uh -huh. You know, I, I would take full responsibility for that. So, well, what do you, what do you wish that people knew about you as a business owner that they don't get to see? Yeah. Like the way that you operate, like, what do you wish that people knew about you? Mm. I mean, I, I, the reason I'm having a hard time answering that question is because I, I don't think like, you know, I don't think anybody's going to believe it. Uh -huh. So the, you know, so I really don't think it matters. I, I don't think I'm going to sell it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why well, make the pitch? What, what do you, what do you, what do you wish when you think about all these people that watch what you're doing from the outside? Because, because I, I, I personally feel like people see you from the outside, and and they think that it's these these little moments that are getting captured, these moments on social media, these like thirty second clips, these two minute clips. And they see this person, and I think that people might even see like a character uh -huh. that is that is playing a part, but but you're not like that's who you are all the time. Yeah, I, I am like, never ever some other person. And so you you talked about like I don't need to get ramped up for an event. Yeah, like I don't like I do nothing to get ready for an event. The Grant that flies in there and goes to sleep with Elena, wakes up with the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, goes to work out, has moments by himself, goes to work, goes home. I'm the same You're guy. You're the same everywhere you go. Whether I'm working on a yeah. $140 million real estate deal or I'm selling a $14 hat. So To me, I'm the same guy. All the, I never, literally never change, whether I'm talking to 5,000 mm -hmm. people or one person. Now, now, I've been in situations where I feel like I have to be a different person in previous jobs. Uh -huh. And, and there, I feel like there's this disconnect between who I am at, at home and then who I am at work and then who I am with my friends. Like there's just this disconnection. Why do you think people, why do you think it's hard for people to just be them all the time? Because they can't be like, you, you can't, sometimes you can't be yourself yet mm -hmm. because you haven't figured out who you are yet. And then you don't have enough, you know, there was a time when I didn't have enough confidence to just be me. In high mm -hmm. school, I could not just be me. So what I did was I started smoking weed with the other guys mm -hmm. to fit in. And then I became somebody like not even I liked. Mm -hmm. So anytime I've strayed from me, and that's a little bit the, the, back to your question about what would I want people to know? Look, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be me. Like I'm where, not. Where do you get, where do you get the confidence though to confront that? Like, because I've, dude, because I've been doing it long enough now. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, nothing's going to, bad's going to happen to yeah. me. The only time something bad happens but, to me but, is when I become someone else. But, but obviously now you can say that. Yeah. But let's go back to in the beginning because that's where most people are right now. Like most yeah, people yeah, are in the yeah. point where they're trying to make this transition to really get, how do I own myself? How do I get super comfortable? You, you, how do you, I get super confident? You gotta, you gotta find out who you are. You gotta find out who you are and all the stuff that you don't like, um, all the stuff that you don't like doing it probably is, is the shovel you need to pick up and, 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 and start digging. Do you think- So the sales thing, like if I would have, you know, people have heard me say I didn't like sales and I'm like, I hated sales. Nobody mm -hmm. actually likes it. Yeah. Sherry reminded me today, this guy was in here putting orth mm -hmm. uh, some kind of yeah. orthodontic things or some kind of new shoe thing. Biometrics. With, yeah. Biometrics. And, <laughs> and I, oh God, I forgot, man. I actually lost seven jobs, mm -hmm. not six. Okay, because I was I sold shoes, shoes, and in a ladies' shoe department. I just remember that for the first time today, that I lost that job. <laughs> so um, all I could think about was the women. I was like seventeen. I'm like, I just I want to sleep with her. <laughs> I hope she takes me home. Screw the shoes. Screw her. You know. So see that kind of stuff gets me in trouble. Uh -huh. That's gonna offend someone. Yeah. And then that gets me in trouble with someone. And then you say, hey, we should take out the screw thing because that was towards women, and we're in a very precarious time right now and yeah. Weinstein and, and yeah. I'll be like don't take it out that's yeah. what I said I need to be me um, do you think that you're do you think that that sales like 
Because I, I, I believe that sales gives people a lot of confidence because they can create. Well, and one of the things that I see in you yeah. is you have like zero, zero scarcity. Like your mindset is so like, burn it, torch burn it. it. So, so the, question, the question is, do you think that- Look, that the sales thing built tremendous it, not just confidence, but but it forced me. It forced me when you learn something that you don't want to learn. Mm -hmm. I was doing five. Uh, I was doing twenty five minutes to work, twenty five minutes back, fifty minutes every day, six days a week. That's three hundred minutes of training every week on a topic I didn't like. Yeah. Now, when I was thirty five years old, I started reading Wall Street Journal and Barron's magazine, mm -hmm. uh, Barron's uh, newspaper. Yeah, yeah. The first time I picked up a Wall Street Journal, I was in Houston, Texas. I lived at Woodway, uh, Woodway uh, Bayou Woods, uh, Bayou Oaks apartments. I was paying 750 bucks a month. And I, I opened this Barron's Magazine. My twin brother told me, you need to learn about finances. Mm -hmm. You got to start reading. I said, man, I can't read a paragraph. Mm -hmm. It was so hard, okay? Well, I started reading those every day. Smart Money, uh, Money Magazine, uh, Wall Street Journal, mm -hmm. Investors Daily, Barron's Magazine. This would lead me to looking at real estate portfolios. Like, right. I didn't. I didn't understand that. It was so uncomfortable. It's like reading a foreign language. Like if you gave me Russian right now and said read it, I'd be like, uh. Yeah. And so I. I remember being a sales guy, hating sales. You need to. You need to learn it anyway. You need to. You need to read about finances to learn it anyway. Push through the. Push through. And what happens is when you push through and you push through and you push through. I'm not in front of anybody. Yeah. This is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I understand what a dividend is. Mm -hmm. Like, but it took six weeks. Sure. Oh, I understand what a what a PE ratio is. That that that's you know the the uh, earnings price earnings ratio price yeah. earnings ratio based on the share price mm -hmm. to the earnings, and it should indicate something, right? So so I started getting a little familiarity. Well, once I did, I'm like, okay, I can read this, and it builds confidence. Mm -hmm. If there was only if there was only one thing that I got out of college was that I finished it. Yeah. But really not no because I I don't know how I finished it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because I didn't really study that stuff. I didn't stay with it. So it depleted my confidence even though I finished it. But when you're learning something on your own like sales and you're like, I know how to handle an objection. And I do the thing that I heard on the tape. Mm -hmm. And it works. And then I learn it so well that I can actually start creating my own little loops, you know, and my own little tricks. Like, you see me do some stuff in there, like that voodoo offer we did yeah. the other day. Dude, that came from me 30 years later, the voodoo offer, hey, I'll give you 100% of your money back, plus $100, you can write out 40% this year, Get it, get to ten thousand dollars, not pay income on the year, which saves you another four thousand dollars, and blah blah, you know, and have this for next year. That came from the time and money close. Wow, that came from a close, a, a, a mathematical formula for closing a deal that put me, put me in a position where I could start ra justifying, rationalizing, analyzing, and making sense of an offer, and so that's why. When you're negotiating, and I'm negotiating, um, we're doing a deal right now, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and we ha we're having to go back mm -hmm. and ask for some money for some repairs. And there was $1.3 million that was not previously negotiated. It has nothing to do with the repairs. Mm -hmm. And I told Ryan, I said, Ryan, when you go back and ask for the $4 million that we're going to split, you need to tell them to wipe off that one three because that's a non-starter. Mm -hmm. Don't ask for 3.5 million. Yeah. 2 million plus 1.3. You ask for 2 million and tell them the other 135 is a non starter. We already, that's off the table. Don't even bring it up again. Mm -hmm. Every time they start going down that road, say, don't, don't even bring that up again. That's off the table. Not, not, we just got to talk about this. Cause I don't, that all came from me learning how to make sense of a $315 car payment because and, I became a master. Yeah. So, so. When and then would later have to do that. I'm sorry, but I would then later have to do that with car dealers where I was telling them, hey, send 10 of your guys, $3.95 a month. It's going to cost you $39.50. They're going to pay half. They're going to go to the seminar. They're going to each sell two cars. It's going to make you $4 million. Sign right here. <laughs> and you get to write it off. I always include the write off. So, you know, when you build that kind of confidence in yourself, mm -hmm. 
I don't need to copy people's material. Mm -hmm. I never do. I don't copy their material. I, I'll attack it. Yeah. It's, I'll use it to say, that's, I don't believe that. I don't mm -hmm. agree with that. Uh, but I don't copy people's stuff. And when you're not copying people's stuff, and when you're not clickbaiting, using other people just to attack to build an audience, when you're not doing those two things, and you're just doing your own thing all the time, mm -hmm. your confidence like swells and you're, you're, you, you, you probably, there, there's probably a bit of arrogance around me. It's kind of like Conor McGregor walking into a building. You know, he just knows, oh, hey, Conor McGregor walks into a building, he's got this air. That's part of his freaking mm -hmm. voodoo, right? Now, Nate, you know, he's just a dirty dog. Yeah. He's just an animal. Just a, a junkyard dog. He, he, he's an animal. He's, mm -hmm. a junk, he, he, he's a drugged out animal. Mm -hmm. And completely different kind of level. Mm -hmm. one, one, I don't know how the, the, the story ends with both of them, but I'm probably more like Connor walking in with a bit of like, hey, this is who I am, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and eat my middle finger if you don't like it. Does money give you confidence? Does the wins that generate money, like all that stuff, got to give you loads of confidence? Well, money's insurance, right? Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, it's like, right? M money's proof. Uh huh. So, so money's personal, like insurance for me. Okay, I got that. That's my umbrella. That's my. It's a massive condom. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 then and then it's and then it's also my my validation. You know, it's my. Uh. That that took that that takes a lot of discipline, right there. Mm -hmm. You don't trick this, you don't fake this. So what, you don't what is Photoshop that? What is that you, this. What is that you, you have right there? Huh? Just so everybody knows, what this is, is that? my this is that thing. I t this is my personal my personal cash accounts that I every know. so every day every day. This is dated. Oh, this is yesterday. So this is no, yeah, th yeah. This is uh, yeah, today's date. So why do you, why do you get that every day? It's the statement of all your cash accounts. Yeah. Why this, do you get it every day? Well, wow, that's a nice little bump. Well, um, because I got this one account, City National Money Market, my legal account with one hundred seventy thousand nine hundred ninety-eight dollars in it. Mm -hmm. That's how much it was yesterday, too. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I have a legal account? You know, because every month I fund a legal account for some ignoranus that wants to come attack me. Mm -hmm. So we just build that up. So I got reserves. Well, that, that was $170,998 yesterday. And it's the same number today, which means nobody's added to it. Nobody took anything from it. So one thing, I, I do this every day because I want to make sure I'm paying attention. And see, like the Bitcoin account, okay? I, I, see, I see somebody in the accounting department didn't, is not paying attention. Because this Bitcoin account, the Bitcoin can't not change from, from day to day. Right. And it's so the same number. Somebody lays out on me. So I got somebody lazy in accounting. So I'm paying attention to my accounts. Money is the manifestation of how each department's running. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's some of the reasons I look at my accounts. And, 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 and I also look at it because, you know, this is. What's the number? This is proof my business is working. <laughs> you know? What's the number? I mean, there's a lot of numbers on here. There's probably... There's What's the biggest number on there? The biggest number? <laughs> the biggest number's got two commas. And a one at the beginning? Yeah, it's got a one on it. What's the second number? Four. <laughs> From left to right. To right to <laughs> From left to right. So what's the third number? Two. It's 142 million. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so 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 I've I've seen online I've seen like the hey what is Grant Cardone's net worth thing? Oh yeah. Do you even? Oh yeah, that's just is that something that you that's track? Stupid. Like is that? Yeah. Or is yeah, the my, cash my, my, more my net to you? worth like oh anybody that's got their net worth on a statement mm -hmm. is got a penis that big mm -hmm. and an ego that fucking yeah that big and a and, a, and an ego that fragile. Mm -hmm. Like if you're tracking your net worth on a day to day basis and not this cash. You're fucking highly confused. Yeah. I don't have my jet on here. Mm -hmm. I don't have the value of the businesses on here. I don't mm -hmm. have the value of my accounts receivables. I got accounts receivables in there. They're worth 
they got to be my accounts receivables for fifteen hundred accounts. No, it's it's a thousand dollars a pop. It, and then it, if what, you multiply, if you do a multiple on it, if you do a course. six or an eight I multiple mean, on it, then it's it's a big number. Yeah, times how many we got? Fifteen hundred. Eighteen. Eighteen hundred. Uh, 1800 mm -hmm. yeah times 1500 average you know times yeah I mean what's somebody gonna pay for that at least 6x yeah so you know mm -hmm. that's that's worth more than a couple yeah. times my, my, mm -hmm. my cash account um, the real estate's worth 1.4 billion if I didn't get a premium for it mm -hmm. if I put the whole package together as one package it's probably worth another 300 million mm -hmm. easily another 300 million somebody would pay me three percent on 104 uh, uh, 1.4 billion you know when you start talking about bees mm -hmm. it's a different ball game like you you just you know there, somebody asked mark cuban what's the difference between a mil being a millionaire and a billionaire and he couldn't even finish an he couldn't answer yeah. the question he's like it's just at everything what, let me ask you this at what point did getting where you're at today become real for you like at what point were you like, cause obviously that like we talk about it all the time, like you can't expect somebody, uh, an eight year old to lift a 300 pound bag of right, cement. Right, like, right, right. At what point did you actually- I can't expect Alan to make a sales call. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like at what point for you were you like, hey, I might be able to, I might be able to hit a hundred million. I might be able to hit a billion. Like at what point- Well, I wouldn't, did, you know, I remember when, I remember when Elena was like, hey, when, when, can, we, when can we talk about buying a plane? I said, look, I gotta have a hundred million liquid uh -huh. to consider doing that. Why is that? Because if you can't buy it twice, I mean, I do what I tell people. Yeah, for people, sure. People don't like me because I tell them, I tell people what's true for me. Mm -hmm. You know, don't start with a small deal. Oh, goddamn Grant Cardone, he treats everybody like they're all rich. Like, don't start with a small deal is advice for me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because that's how you did it. I did one deal. It didn't work for me. I went to 32 units, and that one made me $5 million. So mm -hmm. why would I tell people to start with a small deal when the small deal fucked me and 32 units made me a bunch of money? Yeah. So people don't like it because they're like, I can't even figure out one deal, or that's what they do, one deal, because they're buying stuff like mm -hmm. that. So when I say, look, if you, don't have, if you want to buy a $50 million debt, jet and write a check for it, then, then you need a hundred million in the bank, and you need a lot more money coming. Mm -hmm. You know the, the, that, that that bothers some people because if you're going to go buy this watch, you need to buy you need to be able to buy two of them. Mm -hmm. You need to buy it out of passive income, mm -hmm. not earned income, not a speaking gig, and you need to know it was the dumbest fucking thing you could do. <laughs> well, that, that's the, that's the way I did this watch. Mm -hmm. So so when did I when did I know when when did I think a hundred million would be yeah, when, like, when, like at what point were you like, I can do this? I can do, I can do 100. I said, man, I think we're going to get to 100 million. I remember when I'm like, I think I'm going to be worth $100 million. And how old were you? And I was like, $100 million, man. It, it was, had, had to be, this had to be, this wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. This was probably 11 or 12, 12, so, maybe 12 or 13. So, so five years ago, five I or six started years with ago. you. I yeah. started with you nine years ago. Yeah. It's 2010. It was the beginning of 2010. Um, how much were you worth then? Like, 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 what was your like? How well, many? Well, well, we had everything. Everything was frozen up, right? The two uh -huh. businesses were terrible. This company was worth nothing. Yeah. Um, the accounts were probably our accounts receivables got crushed. Were cut in half. Yeah. We had what five or six employees. There was no energy in the organization. Yeah. I didn't have a name. Mm -hmm. Didn't have 14 million people follow me. That's mm -hmm. got to be worth something. Yeah. We didn't have the webinar income. I mean, my webinar, for, that, that was the account, yeah. right? But the webinar income here was, is this company's probably worth is more, more. $180 million oh, a yeah. year. Mm -hmm. 180, somebody would buy mm -hmm. my webinars and my name for me to come in and do that and pay me yeah. and be able to get their money back in five or six years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know, it's probably worth 50, 60 million. Back then? Yeah. In 10? Yeah. Was I under the lawsuit then? Yeah. I had $7 million left. Wow. I didn't have 1,500 accounts. Uh -huh. Like this all, this mm -hmm. all, we, we, we've been working hard. Mm -hmm. Didn't have the jet. 
Didn't have the $1.4 billion worth of real estate. I think I said that. Uh, didn't have the 1,500 accounts. Didn't have one webinar. Never had taken one dollar in. Yeah. Didn't have any e-commerce. We'll do 40 million out of that e-commerce. See, see. So when I started getting transparent like this, I'm back to that first question: yeah, Why yeah. do people not like you? When you're this transparent, telling people what what you do, what you make, you're either you're either like bragging, or you, you know you're like, hey, I want to I want to show people what's possible, mm -hmm. or a little of both. Maybe it's a little mm -hmm. of both. I don't know. Or you're asking me the question. I didn't, I'm not the one that launched into this. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Yeah, please. When you were 30. Yeah. Like what, were, what was the thing that you were most fearful of? Well, I was working for a guy and I knew it was a dead end. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I've never said this before, but I actually went back to my treatment center that mm -hmm. I went to when I was 25. And I chilled out for two weeks. I quit the job. I quit Tom, mm -hmm. working for Tom. Mm -hmm. I had been on the road 18 months, and I thought I was burnt out. I was I, I was working 250 days a year. I mean, I crushing was, it, yeah. I, no, I, I wasn't crushing it. I was crushing me. Yeah. And and I thought I was burnt out. I had a lot of people around me telling you're burning out. You look bad. You look tired, man. You're always gone. I didn't have a life. There was yeah. no life. I was on the road. I was a road warrior, and um, I was unhappy. I had, I had no personal life. I had I didn't have a woman in my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a partner. So. No chance of having kids because I was just like a, a, a gypsy. Mm -hmm. And um, I went back to I went back to that treatment center. I said, "I, I dude, I just need to come play someplace where I can chill." Mm -hmm. I was lost. Mm -hmm. I was terrified. Oh my god, what am I doing here? You know. And I was in transition again. Now, now I got to leave this job and I got to go do another job. And the job I had to take do now was I had to work for myself. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was time for me to go work for myself. Yeah. And I was scared. Mm -hmm. And I only had, at that time I had maybe, maybe I had, was 31 years old. I didn't have more than, you know, 20 or 30,000 bucks. So I knew I was gonna, gonna go through it. Like I didn't yeah. have any money. So if, if, and I had no income now. So if you, were, if you were somebody right now that was in transition. Yeah. Or didn't like where they were at and they wanted to make a move. Yeah. And they have this fear, this anxiety that you're like, hey, I, I, I'm lost no purpose, yeah, like, yeah. but there's this thing that I need to confront. Yeah. What advice do you give them? You know, the sooner you make that move, the better. And then, and mm -hmm. then you gotta start calling on people. You have to just, you have to do what I do every day. Mm -hmm. Like quit thinking and do it. All the time. Quit thinking. Yeah. Quit thinking, quit talking. Blah, 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 blah. Dude, just do that. Just whatever you think, you, the vomit that just came out that's twirling in your head, just do that. And the ideas that people get hung up in. Yeah, and thoughts, you're gonna find out, planning, dude, that's vomit. Ideas. Okay. Uh, hey, I wanna draw this thing blue. Draw it. Now look at it, mm -hmm. it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because until you know it's terrible, you're not gonna change it. You're just gonna run it around, bang, you may bang, think bang. It, you may think it's gonna be terrible, or, but until you know. Or, 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 or you're like, oh my God, I got this great idea. Alan, mm -hmm. Alan out there. Taylor, dude, do it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, that didn't work. You know? And so, so that, that's mm -hmm. the benefit I have. I mean, when, once, you, once you build the muscle that nobody talks about, mm -hmm. it, it, it best is an ad, just do it. Yeah. Nobody really knows what that means. Nobody, it's just an ad in society now, okay? You can't quit looking at the watch, you know? It's, it's beautiful. It's so gorgeous, yeah. isn't it? I like it more with the black band, I think. It, it looks pretty good. But, but uh, and sometimes it takes a while to, mm -hmm. to figure something out. I mean, I actually like this watch more now than I did then. Wow. I like myself more today mm -hmm. than I did when I was 20. So sometimes you just got to play with it, man. Mm -hmm. You got to play with the pitch. The thing I love most about social media, what we're doing in that e-commerce room, they're, 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 the, 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 the promotion, like, you know, if, if, I, if I have discovered any kind of mastery in me at all, I, I, am, I am borderline, I, I hate to say this about myself, but I think that I am almost possibly close to, in the vicinity of, genius when it comes to marketing. Yeah. Now, now you say it, it, that, but you it, break a lot of rules that yeah. traditional marketers follow. Like yeah, that, it, like, look, so, 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 like, what do you think that brilliance comes from? Like, because the, you do stuff that's just like, there's no way that's gonna work, and then it just, and we're like, wham, 
just like, wow, it didn't make any sense. And, and then we also do things that don't work, just yeah. in all fairness, mm -hmm. but we just bail on it quick. Mm -hmm. We're like, that didn't work, you know, end it. Yeah. Um, so, and look, I don't mean to say that I, like, I don't mean to sound arrogant and all that, blah, 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 but, but everybody has the ability to be genius. I remember mm -hmm. Bob Duggan talking about this yeah. all the time. Everybody he has this huge belief that everybody has genius in them. Mm -hmm. That you're actually, if, if you're not a genius in something, that you're actually not just owning it, you know, and developing yeah. it. And, and so, look, my ability to free think, to be a free thinker, again, a lot of this comes back from selling cars. Yeah. I didn't have an ad budget. Yeah. Or internet. <laughs> I didn't have internet. <laughs> so, I was a guy like, who can I call today that would buy a car from me today? I'm trying to hit my number. Did you feel, at that point, did you feel like, your life literally depended on you succeeding? Every day. Because if I didn't successfully sell cars, mm -hmm. guess what I was gonna end up doing? Probably use drugs again. Mm -hmm. Every day I sold a car, I didn't have to use drugs. Yeah. Because that, that was my drug of the day. So how, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do you create and, 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 that? And, and, and then, dude, you, you end up building this muscle. Like if, 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 like, you, you, if somebody didn't have a drug problem or somebody didn't have a tough childhood, like, how do you create that? I have, like, my life depends on me winning because I think that that's yeah. a common denominator yeah. between yeah. a lot of really successful people. Yeah, is they develop this like, my there's friend, no other friend, option. My friend Carlos Pantera, who I, I think about mm -hmm. all the time, said to me once, he's like, he's like, man, what, well, your work ethic. I said, well, you know, some of us probably probably was born. He's like, it's like you got this. He's like. He's like, I got things I can't stop doing. It's like, you can't stop working. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want your problem, not my, the, yeah. whatever he's struggling with, right? Sure. And I said, bro, you develop that. Mm -hmm. You develop that. You need to develop the, 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 it's a muscle. And it's like a flywheel. If you could just get it going mm -hmm. enough, and then the other thing is this threat. There needs to be a threat in the environment. Me and you talk yeah, about, yeah, I, yeah. I've been talking to you about the threat for 10 years. Yeah. The threat, there needs to be a threat in the environment in order for somebody to, to be propelled to go. So the person that's got it made right now, you're comfortable, everything's fine. You don't, you don't have a threat. Yeah. Moving from California. Like, that uneasy feeling is actually healthy. Like somebody, that, okay. that, 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 that slight bit of anxiety or paranoia what, what, or fe whatever you want to call it. Walking in the cage with that, a dog. That edge, that little bit of edge is required yeah, to yeah. get people to, to, yeah, to yeah, produce. Yeah, Do, doing new stuff. Yeah. You know, doing stuff you're not comfortable with. And, and, then, and, then, and then coming back and doing, the, doing something above your pay grade and mm -hmm. then come back down to doing whatever you got to do every day that's mundane and tough yeah. and, and performing at both of those like they're in part. I've never asked you this before, but how do you think that your life would look now if your dad wouldn't have died when you were 10? Wow, that's interesting because I thought about that, you know? Mm. I have a feeling I would not be as strong as I am. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think my dad. I think I would have rest. I would have gone to him too much. Mm -hmm. And and um, I know I got a couple of cousins, and they had a really strong father, mm -hmm. and w that was successful. And you know, it's it's hard for a tree to grow in the shadow of another tree. Right. So. You know, you, you, you sometimes you cut that other tree down. That other tree just sprouts because it's got its own light. Right. And so um, I don't. Um, I have a feeling I would not be where I'm at today. Yeah. Now, you think being, you you think you would have gotten in trouble and into drugs and everything? Yeah, I think I probably would have ended up with a drug problem either way. Because mm -hmm. um, my dad was so busy, I don't mm -hmm. think my dad had time. My dad was overwhelmed financially. Yeah. He was doing fine, but he he was under. He was burdened by finances, not because he was spending too much and not because he wasn't earning enough, mm -hmm. but because he had, a, he had two obligations, one to his five kids and his wife, mm -hmm. and the second was to himself. He suffered a little bit from the same thing I did. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I picked it up from him or whatever, but he wanted to be financially successful. Mm -hmm. First for the family, and then second, he had this thing. He's like, I want to make it. Yeah. Nobody, talk, nobody talks about wanting to make it. Yeah. I just want to take care of my people. Mm -hmm. and just enough. Yeah. 
And, and you know, here I am all noisy saying, I, I want to get rich. Yeah. Because I have. Ever since I was a... When I watched my dad... When, when my dad died, and my dad did everything right financially, mm -hmm. meaning he saved the money, had life insurance, paid the house off, all the debts were paid. Like, he didn't... He didn't make any mistakes, mm -hmm. but when he died, the money stopped. Mm -hmm. That had a huge impact on me. Mm -hmm. For five years, I watched my mom, from 10 to 15, watched her terrified. I, I don't forget that. Like, mm -hmm. that, that is a, that's one of those ingrained. Deep down rooted. I didn't understand it until mm -hmm. really recently. Recently, I'm like, oh, wow, the income stopped. Now, do you, because you. Don't let the you, income stop. You've always been, like, extremely frugal. You yeah. don't waste money. Yeah. You don't like buy like expense. Do you think that that's born in that, oh. and it was just something you could never kick? That, that held me back for that helped me in the mm -hmm. beginning, and then held me back later. Yeah, because because frugal frugal gets you to a certain place, and then it then it traps you. It constrains you. It constrains you. Yeah. And so there's nothing I ever wanted to buy. Nothing, in 30 years that I ever wanted to purchase, that would have negatively impacted where I'm at today. Yeah. Because I was always out producing, right? And and I didn't know that. I thought I was saving my way to some place. Mm -hmm. So and that was my upbringing. My upbringing was save the money, save the money, save the money, push but the money. But it's really up. produce the money. Produce it, man. Just produce. produce. That, that, that. Yeah. I, I had that. I mean, the first part matters. You mm -hmm. can't have more going out than it's coming in. Mm -hmm. Once you figure that out, then you need to go produce. So I had the discipline. And and I had I, a lot of people don't have the discipline. They're going to spend every penny that comes in, mm -hmm. and then some. Doesn't matter how much you give them. I had the discipline. Once you have the discipline, then you got to then you got to like then you got to go crazy on the production. Mm -hmm. What's your And then the third thing you got to do is is then you got to you got to take the production money and, and and make the third play, which is put it in assets that are going to pay you forever. That's a different question. Does money make you successful? That gives you one one sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. When you put a billion dollars worth of real estate that nobody can take away from mm -hmm. you, you can't break the partnerships, the Internal Revenue Service can't take it from me, the government can't take it from me, and it's just gonna spit at me forever, mm -hmm. you, can walk, you can start doing a lot of things in your environment to, to you know, that, 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 that show that you like so much, the billionaire. Uh, uh, billions? Billions, yeah. you know, that FU money. Yeah. You know, those guys, they're, they're never gonna say they got FU money, mm -hmm. but sure is good to know at night that nobody can take that away from me. This could die. Yeah. You're 80 years old. 80. Well, you're looking back. What's your proudest business accomplishment? If I'm 80, you're what? 56. You better not. You better not be big fat, dude. <laughs> you better not be fat. Fat and fucking sunburning. Sandy won't let that happen. What I'm do you, 80 what's, and what's what? A, yeah, what do you think the thing is you're going to be most proud of as a business person, as a business owner, when you're 80 years old, when you're looking back? I hope you're still with me, man. Yeah. You know, that we're still doing things together. and, um, You know, I think I'm going to be proud of, you know, if, there, if there's a handful of people that are still here that are mm -hmm. like, that really made something out of this and, and that, that can continue to run it and make it work and it helps a lot of people. You know, I think one day we're gonna look back and say, God damn, man. Like, like when I have these little things, these, these guys on the internet, like yeah. click baiting me or, you know, making fun of me or trying to make, make, make less of me. And then I'm gonna be like, we're in 25,000 locations yeah. around the world. They're, go, they're gonna be like, that was stupid. It's just a glimpse. That was it's stupid. Just a what, whatever they were yeah. doing was stupid. Cause we're sitting here, I'm sitting here you know, you need to pick the heart. You, you know, when there's a horse race, you guys should pick, you know, because I guarantee you I'm going to be running mm -hmm. and I'm going to be winning. So I had, I had Rob and Rob and Ralph pick the wrong horse back in 2010. I hope they see this. They probably will. <laughs> and I told them, I said, boys, you're picking the wrong horse. Okay. Make sure you pick the right horse when you're betting on a race. And because I'm not going to quit running mm -hmm. in a race and I'm going to win the race and I've proven that I'm going to win and I've been winning for 30 years. I'm going to keep winning. So at 80, we're just going to be winning at a different level. We're going to have 25,000 spots like this, mm -hmm. offices around the world where people are, are using the Cardone products, mm -hmm. training, education systems, you know, and, and, and you know, that's going to probably continue on long mm -hmm. after I'm around. So. 
I hope that's what happens. Yeah. I know I've underestimated what could happen the whole time. I keep, I keep reminding myself, Elena was telling me the other night, just remember you, but you've underestimated the entire time we've been together. You've exceeded, I've exceeded every single target that I, that I ever had. How long till you hit a billion? Well, it depends on how you figure it, you know. So if you got, if you got a dick that big and an ego that big and one that's even, even, even more fragile than that, um, you know, I mean, I could probably estimate myself close to there right now, but because mm -hmm. you just inflate everything. I'd yeah. count all the furniture. Gather the furniture, yeah. add it up. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't even know if I'll make that. You know, I don't know if I'll make that. The kids will probably make it, mm -hmm. if, you know, if they, if they hang, in, hang in the game. But I don't know that it even matters. You know, you can't spend it. I just want to produce. If you gave mm -hmm. me $2 billion right now, I'd, I'd be at work tomorrow. Of course you would. I think, right? Do you uh, think I'd be, huh? A million percent. Yeah. What, it's, what it's like for a person to have such a big why yeah, yeah, and yeah. such a big purpose yeah. to where I'm going to make money, I'm going to be successful, but if you, if you give me 10 times as much or take 10 times as much away, then I'm still, I'm still going to be doing the same I'm thing. I'm going to be doing it because like I, I literally am, you know, they say, be careful what you ask for. When I told my mother at 16, we had a fucking throwdown fight. Mm -hmm. She was so Did she punch you? She threw something. She threw a glass across yeah. the kitchen. <laughs> I remember exactly where I'm at on 20th Street in Lake Charles, Louisiana, Oak Park Elementary, Oak Park uh, Junior High School is across the, across the way. I'm sitting at this little table, can't be more than six feet long. I'm sitting in the middle part of the table, second chair. She hurdles, because I'm, I'm just like, I'm so unappreciative for my life. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I am so sick of this. I hate this. Because she's clipping coupons. Mm -hmm. Everything's fear. I want to take the car out. I had a little 1966 Mustang, powder, powder blue. Powder blue. You know, <laughs> just started to smoke weed. So now I got those little crimes in my, mm -hmm. you know, that, that she, she, she doesn't know, but I know. And I'm like, I want to be rich. Tired of worrying about how much money we spend on gas. This is stupid. I'm gonna get rich one day. She grew up in she my mom was in a in a food line, in a bread line. Yeah. So she hears this punk runt uh, talk about getting rich. She's just trying to hold things together. Yeah. And I said, one day I'm gonna get rich and I'm gonna help a lot of people because I was pissed off because my uncle didn't mm -hmm. none of my uncles would help me. Um and she threw that glass across. I still got a scar. Y'all should get a picture of that scar one day. Got a scar across my knee, man. And then I left that night. Did you go smoke some weed? <laughs> yeah. <of course> I <laughs> Went shacked up with my girl. And then I realized, shit, I couldn't even pay for the hotel. Yeah. So I had to come home the next morning. Rapid fire, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You got rapid fire coming in? I got rapid man? fire. What was by, your by the way, let me just say, I'm really proud of you, Jared. Thank you. you 10 years you've been here, man. You know, it's amazing. What advice would you give me right now? What advice would I give you right now? Uh, Jared has to develop. You have to be, uh, you have to develop a, a harder, clearer vision of who people really are. Mm -hmm. And you have to, you Cause have I'm an, I, I try to see the best in everybody all the time, but it, it's. N yeah, but, but you, yes, you do. Fault. Yes, to you do fault. see, try to see the yeah. best in everyone, but, but really it's, 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 Below that is you, you are unwilling to confront mm -hmm. weaknesses in other people, mm -hmm. um, evil. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you know, we've had this conversation. Yeah, you're have. unwilling, you're unwilling mm -hmm. to, to look at somebody and see, okay, there's their assets, there's their liabilities. You see the assets, and I'm like, dude, this guy's never getting over his liabilities. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, and then once you d bring him into the fold, you, you're, you're, you're oh, <laughs> hoping for the best. I know it's going to change. I know it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and, and you try to coach people along. Mm -hmm. I've never coached you. Mm -hmm. Fucking never. Yeah. You try shit I've never done with you. Yeah. You made it, dude. Mm -hmm. I didn't give you a guarantee. You give other people guarantees. I pay you on the freaking, on the net, net, net. You pay people promises. Mm -hmm. You got people asking you for fucking guarantees and shit. Right? Yeah. I need a guarantee and then I need a guarantee on the guarantee yeah. of the guarantee. Um, 
you know, you got people coming over here trying to tell us what to do, and you're like, dude, like, let's do what Grant does. Yeah, that, that works. So, you tend you tend to you ask for advice. Yeah, you 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 look outside uh -huh. for, for more intelligence. Yeah, and I never do. Yeah, you know, I get all my intelligence in one place. <laughs> And then do I'm it like, again. Do do it again. Yeah, and do it again. Let's what do, do we it do last time? Let's do, do it, it again. again. Let's do yeah. another version of it. Let's do another do version it. of it. Let's do. But bum bum. You know, and 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 it's interesting because I think I'm going to write a marketing book. You know, how to be a genius at marketing. Yeah. Because because I realized the other day I'm like, dude, we flipped that offer. Mm -hmm. I don't know why everybody doesn't see how to flip an offer. Mm -hmm. You know, or why do why everybody's begging me to put a date. Why? Why? It doesn't need a date. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you guys want to put a date on this thing. Put a date on the checkout. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just see things, and I don't know. It's because I own it. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I think you own it. Own it too. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so I would give you that advice. Like you got to look. You have to be more skeptical and hard. Yeah. Skeptical is a is a good word. You know. Mm -hmm. Like think about that company that we got involved with, and they just went down the tubes. Yeah. What was I telling you about the free offer over mm -hmm. and over? And then the, this one, and then this one, and then this one. And every time somebody yeah. would explain to me, yeah. we got in so many arguments. And then about, you're like, no, because you never agreed with that. I never agreed with the whole, the whole deal. Yeah. This one to do this one to do this one yeah. to do this. The people watching won't understand what I'm saying, but I was like, those last two things don't make any sense in business. Yeah. They did it and they get in all this trouble. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I kept saying, and you're like, but they're making seventy million dollars a year, and they're making one hundred and forty yeah. million, and now they're going all that money's going to go away. Mm -hmm. So maybe now we get to do what I always wanted to do. Yeah, which is we're going to do it. Let's make all the money right now. Yeah, and not have people have to go through blah 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 mm -hmm. blah, and we do it the right way. So uh, look, what would I tell you, man? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing the right things with your money. Mm -hmm. See, you repeat the money thing. Yeah, you don't go to a bunch of places for money advice. Yeah. You found something that works, and you do it over and over, and over. And over uh -huh. again. Somebody comes to you, I got a little blah, 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 blah. You're like, yeah, that sounds yeah. good, but you're not gonna do it. Yeah. That's what I do with, mm -hmm. you know, running the business. And then hopefully a couple of these partnerships pop. That'll be good. Mm -hmm. What else, what other advice would I give you? I don't know. You know, stay away from alcohol. Has no upside. <laughs> Just drink with me. Only drink with me. Okay. Only when Deal. me and you go out. Deal. Okay. What was your favorite class in school? Uh, typing. Typing. Yeah. Miss, Miss, uh, what was her name? Was it because of the teacher? Was it because of typing? No, not really. Uh, it was because it was, I was doing something. Yeah. And I didn't want to do the class, but somebody said it was easy. Was it because it was, wasn't hard to understand? Because I always had a problem reading. Like when I had to go in and like, read books and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I always really struggled with like comprehending reading. That was always one thing that I scored low in. Uh -huh. Low in reading comprehension. Ty I, I like typing, but I didn't really love home home mm -hmm. ec. I mean uh, the the wood woodwork mm -hmm. woodwork class. So that was doing too. Yeah. Um PE hated it. I didn't mind PE, but I got picked on a lot. So yeah. I, I was a little dude. Yeah. And the and the coach didn't like me. Who if if you could describe yourself I to, like that. What, cla it, what class did I like the most? Yeah. Yeah. I've never been asked that. If you, could, if you could characterize yourself as a superhero. Yeah, yeah. Who do you most commonly, like who's the first, super, like today, where you're at right now, who do you think of? Uh, no, I don't think it would be Superman. No, not King Kong, dude. King Kong's fucking, that damn Venezuelans. Um, <laughs> Probably, probably, uh, what's his name? Spider-Man? No, no, uh, no, no, uh, um, the guy with the... Oh, Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. Iron, Iron Man, yeah. Probably, probably. Yeah. Iron Man. I like yeah. that. Or it may, maybe Batman, but, I, you know, I don't have all the gadgets. Yeah. But what are my superpowers? I don't have any superpowers, you know? Promo who, Man! Who was, your, who was your first celebrity crush? Celebrity crush. The uh, first was woman Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. I thought she was so hot. <laughs> wow. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she is so hot, man. Meryl Streep. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> is that weird? It's totally weird. Uh, let's see. Who was the other one? It was the blonde. The blonde that did the beach scene. Uh, 
Brooke Shields? No, no, no. She had the, the tight little things. Uh, the ringlets? Ringlets. Uh, Bo, Bo, Bo. Oh, Bo Derek. Bo Derek. Yeah. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, the, the, the one movie that whenever it's on, you have to watch it. Oh, uh, I think I've probably watched this movie too many times now, but it's um, the movie where they go to the asteroid. Armageddon? Armageddon. Yeah. I probably watch that too many times now. I cry every time I watch it. Yeah. What's the, seventeen times or something? What's what's at you, we've we've went been to, I don't know, forty countries or something like that. Yeah. In the last year, what what was your favorite? What was your favorite trip? Uh, Thai, man, that that trip to Thailand was uh -huh. phenomenal. It was the the, the house was crazy. Uh -huh. The pool, the swimming pool was so unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I I didn't love the waters there. The waters are a little murky. Mm -hmm. You know, to get in the ocean, but but um, the Maldives trip was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was a little too quiet for me. Singapore was great. Yeah. Um, you know. So, uh, but this you is, know, this all is... these places are only as good as the people you're around. Yeah. So you go to Dubai, you're like, okay, but once you're there for a couple of days, you're like, okay, well, who am I with? Yeah. Because everything gets pretty small after mm -hmm. you finally get someplace. Then you're back down to, okay, what are we talking about? What are we doing? Yeah. Based on let's go live. Based on your knowledge today <laughs> yeah. of your daughters. Yeah, 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 yeah. When Sabrina's thirty, what do you think she's doing? Well, you know, I, I told Elena the other day. I said, Elena, you know, Sabrina's husband. If she does what you did and your mother did, Sabrina's husband is probably twenty-five right now. Could be working here. Yeah. Wow. You know, some of these young guys we are. Yep. So, uh, she's 30. What do you think? Like, based on what she likes doing and what she's about. What, Sabrina? Like, yeah, what do you think she ends up doing? Oh, man, I don't know. It gets, it's, it, you know, when you start thinking about your kids, what they're going to do. Yeah. Like, having kids is so, like, good and bad. The responsibility is so enormous. Man. Right. And then you start worrying about, will they still be around? Will something happen to them? Oh, my God, I hope they don't go bad the way I did. Oh, my God, all the time. You can't. I just start getting mm -hmm. worried, you know. Is she going to get pregnant? Somebody going to knock her up? Yeah. And, you know, she's only 10, but I mean, I start worrying about all that stuff. Sure. And so uh, hopefully one of those kids will want to do something with the company. Yeah. And it's something, the real estate's going to be there forever. Yeah. So, or not, maybe, I don't, I don't know what she's going to do. I don't, well, they can do, do whatever they want to do. Anything you think for Scarlett? Scarlett? Uh, Scarlett could be a boss. Yeah. She's a, she's a, I, I don't really know, man. They've got the, the, you know, I don't know. Do you, um, when they start getting 18, 20, yeah, yeah. 22, how are you going to handle money with them? What do you mean? Oh, I need some money, daddy. You know, how, how's that whole money thing going to work? Are they going to have to get jobs? Well, they already have a, their own account. So mm -hmm. all the money they get now, they contribute to Cardone Capital. Mm -hmm. They should be able to live off Cardone Capital. So. Right now, they get a check every month. They'll mm -hmm. get their first check this month. Mm -hmm. you, you can blow all of it if you want to. Spend it all. Learn, learn, live off the passive income. Mm -hmm. So if they keep throwing in, earning money, and throwing that in, that in, that'll probably take care of them when they're mm -hmm. 18. I don't, I don't expect I'm giving them anything. Yeah. Because I think that that would mess them up. Mm -hmm. uh, they've already been given a, 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 a pretty decent shot here. Yeah. So now, let's see if they... If they do do the right things with it, they're they're not you know. If I was flying private when I was fifteen years old, I mean that could have really fucked me up, uh -huh. or it could have really helped me. Yeah. And just being around that much possibility, mm -hmm. like I, I didn't even think I wasn't even thinking about it. Scarlett has only been on one commercial flight in her whole life. She wanted to do it. Yeah. Papa, when do I get to go fly with other people? I want to see what they do. Like, so, but they, they need that experience. Yeah. The kids need that experience. So it's either going to mess them up, really, really mess them up, or really, really help them. Mm -hmm. but, but that'll be up to them. I'm not going to not do it. There's no way it doesn't help them. Yeah. I mean, if, if you said, hey, if you knew it was going to mess him up, would you take it away from him? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. 
what do you, when you think about like the legacy that you'll leave, you talk about, you're talking about legacy a lot uh, lately, like more wait, than ever, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, you don't worry about it when you're 30. Yeah. You don't, even, you know, you worry about it when you're 60. What do you... Because it's TikTok time, man. I mean, I, I know the, I, I kind of know the answer to this, but like for you today, me, what, me, what, me. Do you, what do you want to be remembered for? Yeah. And do you think that that'll change? I want people to tell stories about me. Mm-hmm. Like, I want people to say, you remember when that dude did the voodoo offer? Or do you remember when he, you know, went live at 1030 at night? And sold sell? seats till 1 a.m. in the morning? Yeah. Do you remember when, that's what I want. I mm-hmm. want people to remember those funny stories mm-hmm. that are real, that are authentic. Uh, you know, hey, man, I could always trust that, 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 that Grant would, everything would be on the edge with him, you know, mm-hmm. like. Um, he'd come in the studio, man, and, 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 you know, almost impossible to make him happy. Like, but, but, but that people would feel like, hey, man, I got just a little bit better around him because, because of him. Mm-hmm. And then the people that really know me know, know what I'm up to. And the mm-hmm. people that, that watch me or feel like they're competing with me or I'm taking something from them somehow, they'll say, yeah, I knew the dude. They'll probably say nice things about me then. Because they'll be like, yeah, he's a friend of mine. What percentage of these people do you think will actually be around doing this 10 mm. years, five years, 10 years from now? No, they, they won't be. They'll be doing some tiny version. Yeah. That will, you know, and only because it pays them some money. Mm-hmm. They'll only be doing it because of money. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing this because of money anymore. Yeah. I mean, I measure the money, everything. I look at it every day and everything, but... And the money's impressive. But when you're doing something and money's not impressive anymore, mm-hmm. then you're fucking slave. You're doing it just to pay the bills. Doesn't matter whether it's a million dollars a year or 70,000 bucks a year. Mm-hmm. When you're just paying bills, when that's your only motivation, I'm selling this to pay bills. Um, doing this, I'm singing to sell the bills, like, you know, to pay the bills. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell this joke pay the bills and mm-hmm. fucking nobody feels good about that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to catch the ball to pay the bills. It's like a monkey mm-hmm. earning a quarter. I, I'm, I'm way past that now. So now I get to like, I'm not earning, I'm not paying bills now. Yeah. Now I'm like, Hey, I want to make a move. I want to make a move, you know, and then, and then that feels good. So it keeps you young too. So these other guys, the like, you know, they're, they're, they're jokes. And they know mm-hmm. it. They, they know it. They, mm-hmm. know, they know compared to their potential, they're jokes. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 they, and they know it. It's not me calling them a joke. They know they are living below their potential. Yeah. So I'm still living below my potential, but not that far below it. Like, at least I'm knocking on the, uh, the trap door. I'm right. Like, hey, 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 I'm coming through, bro. <laughs> and there's a chance I actually pop my head out. They're so buried underneath it that they're talking about me. Because if they were tapping on the trap door, if they were tapping on the potential door, they mm-hmm. would not have time to talk about me. Yeah. There would be no criticism of Grant, uh, no videos about Grant, no, no, hey, let's dissect Grant. You'd be tapping on your own door. You wouldn't even have time with me. Yeah. People, above, people above me don't even know me. Yeah. They're not talking about me. Mm-hmm. So, so you got to be careful who you, you know, what, 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 what level you're playing, what level you're mentally playing at. You, you, you know, you, you don't, you don't hate up. Mm-hmm. Most people do. I don't, why though? Like, why, well, why, you know, why they is, just do. They always, you, they try to find a reason to justify. People should, should they look try up to and find work a reason up. to justify why they don't have or they don't. Yeah. Like they, they, they are not yeah, who but they it's see. Like, it's like, let's urinate up. Yeah. That, that, that's what it looks like. Like, let's piss up. I've done it before. With your brother. No, yeah, with my twin brother, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just doesn't work, man. It's, it, and, and it's not a golden shower moment either. <laughs> it's, it's more like, God dang, I got to get all this off of me. It just mm-hmm. doesn't look good. The people watching from the outside are like, why do they keep talking about him? Mm-hmm. And... I don't ever say anything about it. Yeah. Because it's good for me. Bring it on, boys. Yeah. Keep talking. So I know it bothers the people sometimes around us though. Yeah. Well, because they you somebody know. told me today said, so and so is doing a video and him and this guy and this guy. I'm like, dude, it's good for us. Yeah. Because when they're doing that, they can't be creating on their own game. Yeah. 
You can't pop through the trap door and talk about me at the same time. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So we have, in closing, we have um, 10X Growth Conference coming up. Oh, we do. In February. What do you, what do you hope that people know about what this event can do for them? When you walk in the room, mm -hmm. you'll walk in. I think, what percentage? 92% said they would come back. 94, 94. yeah. 6%, I, I'm, not, I'm not making those people happy no matter what. Mm -hmm. So you walk in the building and the moment, you walk, the moment you walk in this building, unlike any other conference people have been to, the, my goal for this conference was you walk in and you look around and say, this is important. Mm -hmm. And nothing else has to happen. Mm -hmm. And you, you get excited. All the way up to the event, going to the event, mm -hmm. buying the ticket. Having the, having the ticket, like everything about it's exciting. They call, the tickets cost money. Right. I got to travel to go to. Everything about it's a little risky and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and careless. And um, what's going to happen? Who's going to be there? The is fact that, that, is, could that be like a threat that you talked about earlier? Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a little bit of a threat, mm -hmm. okay? All of it's a bit of a threat. It's new. You and then you get it. there and then uh, people are talking about 10X, chanting, 10X, 10X, hoo hoo, yeah. 10X. You know, and there, there's this vibe going off, man. And, and, and people are talking about big money and they're talking about increasing big, giant goals. Wow, am I going to be all right there? Am I, you know, people are going to like me? All that. But when you walk in the room every day, you'll walk in and you'll walk in this beautiful stadium. Um, everybody in the room is going to be believing one thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to expand. Mm -hmm. 0220 2020. The numbers are freaking awesome. Yeah. 0220 2020 10x. And and I'm going to be there. I'm bringing in a bunch of my friends to like make people let people feel the possibility and the fear. If they don't move to the possibility. <laughs> that's what you that's what people need to be told today. Like if you if you don't work on the possibility, you're going to be consumed by the liability. The liabilities. Mr. Grant Cardone, thank you very much. I'm glad you did this, man. <laughs> well, at least I had a friendly interview.